Hi, hello, and welcome to Collecting Logs, Matrix, Traces from Flaskcap session. I am Arvind, and I work at Elastic as a developer advocate. I also blog at arvind.dev, and my DMs are open on Twitter. If you have questions or any queries regarding Elastic or DevOps or any open source technologies, feel free to DM me. I also write a newsletter on open source, uh, various developer conferences like these at devshorts.in. Please do subscribe. It's a weekly newsletter. So that being said, let us quickly get onto the session today because we have very short window and I also want to demo uh, collecting logs, metrics and traces, which is going to be very interesting to watch. Uh, so basically, Elastic Stack is a free and open and open source stack uh, which has multiple components which helps you to do bunch of things actually uh, it could double up like it's basically a search engine but you, it could also double up to become an observability engine or also a security or threat hunting engine uh, like elastic search is the heart and soul of this thing if you are very new to it all of these products are with downloadable uh, like you could go to elastic.co slash downloads it's these are free to download free to use uh, all the things that i'm showing today are something that you could go and build on your own without even giving an email to anyone so you could deploy it on any cloud as well so elastic search is a distributed no sql data store uh, come search engine uh, which can ingest a lot of data of different types of sh sizes shapes and tenures and then uh, you have kibana which is a, a visualizer which sits on top of elastic search and then you have logstash and beats which are data ingestion modules uh, which uh, which can push data into elastic search apart from these ingestion technologies you also have a lot of other ingestion based technologies that also can ship data into elastic search that is something that we are gonna talk a bit about definitely so but the key thing to remember is the beats and apm agents that i'm going to discuss today and now if you if you are from the devops world if you are even from the developer world and have great knowledge in open source you might have heard about elk which is nothing but elastic search log stash and kibana uh, the trio is called lovingly called as elk stack or uh, elk elk uh, in general so Elastic stack is just a uh, just another way to call this thing because there are so many components and uh, we are out of uh, acronyms to call things and then like because it is it is now more than what uh, all these three components are. Now that being said, the stack helps you to uh, interact, uh, build various solutions. Like I said previously, it could be your search, it could be your DevOps related or CI/CD observability or different sorts of observability, which we are going to talk today, and again security uh, that uh, like anti malware, threat hunting, etc. Uh, so you might also have questions like who uses Elasticsearch? Like I, I've, I've been telling that, you know, Elasticsearch is, can do that, this and all, but who can potentially use Elasticsearch? So it, it could be a developer who loves coding and but wants really, really less bugs uh, to see uh, his or her code uh, nice, better. Uh, it could be... Uh, you know, a uh, uh, DevOps person uh, who is kind of like, uh, you know, wants all the systems to be healthy, functioning well, and does everything nicely and like automate will everything is properly processed uh, and no configuration mistakes. Uh, it could be a, a like, you know, a SecOps person uh, who is looking after the network security, uh, system security, or any sort of security, but also want to monitor the security events coming out of them and then like, you know, do all of this. Uh, it could also be uh, like you know a product owner uh, looking after the product performance and uh, and kind of like looking at how much time does this uh, specific uh, uh, you know you know page loads in uh, it does it take eight seconds or how many calls are coming how many errors that we are generating and can we fix them or make such plans actually uh, so if you are a product owner or someone like a business analyst as well you could potentially use elastic search uh, to do debug and find issues or do various things as well so this is one way of to look at things there are many more possibilities but i think these are the personas if you are from observability or DevOps background or a system engineering background, you would very well resonate to what I'm trying to tell. Um, now, that being said, uh, I, I would just simply give you an example of what it what Elasticsearch does and how this specific scenario that I'm trying to explain uh, would matter to you. So say if you are, if I'm a developer or if you're a developer generally, uh, what we do is like usually code and of course, probably listening to nice songs as well. And then, um, and then like kind of push that code to our data centers or cloud, whatever we were working in. And then um, the, the user who's sitting on the other end uh, would access this application for their use cases uh, for probably booking a ticket uh, to probably like searching for something or like, you know, maybe 
another developer even like if you are building an api uh, uh, there is a, another internal developer in your company who might be using this particular uh, platform itself but then uh, the user might also face a disruption in the service like the the tickets or the or the thing that they are trying to do with this particular application might not be working at all uh, or it might be showing certain amount of warnings like say if a specific browser is not properly loading in a way that they want to load or like a specific version of api is not working or giving intermittently some issues or it might be taking more amount of time to kind of like give proper results so these are the issues that probably a lot of users might be seeing and but you as a developer sitting on the other end might not have great knowledge into all of this and uh, that is where uh, you could you could use technologies like elastic stack and then probably like push all of this data into elastic stack and thereby you could enable that bidirectional reporting and monitoring uh, throughout your infrastructure uh, and and in getting to know about what what are these events that are happening in your infrastructure so this is one way to put through like you know if you want to know what's happening uh, from the internal state of application, uh, uh, this is what is called observability. Uh, so there are many, many definitions, many approaches that we could talk about. Uh, I'll also talk about um, another approach that probably if you are from a system engineering point of view and you don't probably push code, but you push configs or you try to maintain the systems, like then how would you solve the problem? Then like why would it matter if you, why should you collect logs, metrics and traces? Uh, so yeah, how do you do all of that? Like, you know, Obviously, everyone would say, uh, like, you know, collect all the data and then uh, you will be able to see all of this. And that is what probably every team would also do. Uh, and then they would be using one or these one or the other of these technologies like uh, uh, this is a page a screenshot that I have taken from uh, the CNCF uh, landscape so each of them are different sort of open source or uh, like you know proprietary or a SaaS solution projects uh, they kind of like uh, either are, are are monitored by this particular cncf which is a cloud native computing foundation if you haven't heard of them do look at it obviously the popular one kubernetes uh, as you could see here you could monitor uh, the uh, with various tools or like log with various tools or trace with various tools each of them are very very interesting as well and very important so so but then like there is there is something like cool tool fatigue as you could understand that there are so many tools to choose from what tool to use and how would you use so what is the speciality why should i put it into elastic search or why should i use this free and open technology or something like that so so you might think of that i'm not going to tell that okay this is why it is better this is not it's not better i'm going to just show you an example and leave it for you to try it out and feel um, what you feel like and if you have feedback feel free to like also share information about me so usual scenario when you start collecting this data so what happens is um, you try to ki kind of like you know uh, collect whatever what that is relevant to that specific team like say uh, apm which is like application performance monitoring uh, what people would do is like people would want to collect uh, the transaction monitoring information request response times and like you know the performance and then trace the code how the trade how the water flow is happening uh, of the code uh, the execution and then if there are any errors that are occurring how would the errors uh, 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 like what with what scenario the or what user flow the error has occurred or what time it has occurred so so these are the specific things that are collected likewise each team uh, say if you have a devops team or if you have a developer team like each team would collect something very specific in some cases all of this might be doing by a single person uh, which is very good but then like the tools might be different because like they were using different tools to collect different data uh, for different reasons like again <laughs> it could be an organizational thing as well but what, uh, like I said in the first slide, like how a developer pushes and like tries to collect and what observability uh, that they would get in a similar manner, uh, you could also see all of this has a common timeline, right? Like, you know, uh, you, you have everything, the data points are generated at a common time. And then that is where if you would want to like, you know, unify all of this data set into a common place, like a common data store. Uh, and that helps you to do more, like that helps you to do the, achieve the observability and help you to correlate things much better. Uh, so, so we are also going to talk about correlation we are also going to talk about how uh, like you know specifically the correlation would work and what open source projects that we are using uh, to do all of that so this is precisely two ways to i kind of like put through what observ observability is like one way is like from the developer point of view if you are looking to observe what's happening in your internal data infrastructure another one is like you know how you could unify all of this thing and try to correlate it and build something like an observable platform so these are two ways that i am explaining 
now like i said uh, i want to go a bit deeper a step down and also explain you what are the frameworks tools that are there which are very very popular not like the full landscape but then like you know uh, explain a deep into it like obviously elastic search is popular tool for pushing logs into elastic search and like you know analyzing building log and dashboards on top of it and then you have uh, like eager which is a popular code uh, distributed tracing solution uh, again a cncf project uh, that you could use in parallel in in, in with uh, the kubernetes and then you have uh, prometheus which is a popular metric store uh, it can store metrics that are happening uh, in other from the your infrastructure and then you have metrics exporters and then you could export it to a backend like elastic such as well for the long term storage and analysis uh, and then on top of it you have zipkin which is another code tracing another open source platform uh, i believe now uh, open tracing which i'm going to which i'm showing right now with the the logo here open tracing is also very popular but open tracing and open census have merged together to form something called open telemetry uh, which is a very popular project in now which is vendor agnostic and then you could use the agent and switch to a which have a different vendor every time open telemetry is is very uh, is is coming up uh, right really fast and it's also a cncf project apart from that you have elastic apm so beats and everything uh, everything in this area uh, so there are so many projects again like and how, what is the best way there is no one best way you could also use uh, like you know different tools to collect and unify and correlate this data the good part is elastic search supports all of this as an integration and you could simply uh, use one or the other integration to either collect from these uh, uh, these info these frameworks or tools and then still send the data for further correlation and further sa sanitization or further uh, you know analysis as well now how the architecture of an uh, apm app apm situation would look like so suppose if you have a microservice uh, uh, application which uh, has multiple services written in different language which includes python or any framework right of course the, uh, the agent would should support the specific framework but then you have multiple apps with different programming languages and then you could also send the data to apm server and then it sends to elastic search and then like kibana now it's it's a simple thing you could download elastic search uh, kibana uh, kibana elastic search and then like you know apm server and then kickstart this or you could use a cloud service like elastic cloud to simply build on top of it and then like you know collect this tracing elastic search uh, all of these technologies are cloud agnostic you could use it on your own data center or or any other cloud platform uh, on top of it you could also use it on a kubernetes platform if you are very much well versed with kubernetes i wouldn't recommend to get started with kubernetes because it's also a distributed system elastic search is also a distributed system you might take some time to learn all of these concepts in brief so i wouldn't recommend you to go through the elastic cloud or kubernetes way if you are a beginner into this technology i would also re always recommend you to go through it of course but we have an operator for elastic cloud on kubernetes so that you could deploy this entire thing for free again uh, and use all of the, th the the things that i'm trying to tell today uh in in a simple manner now uh like you know while while we are talking about all these tools right each tool still ships the data in a different format right obviously like you know each tool has its own functionality uh like say open testing in a, in a separate data format maybe a json but it has different attributes so while i'm talking about you can correlate you can correlate that you can analyze that you can further bring it down to elastic search what uniqueness that the project offers you to like probably do all of this like you know collecting all of this and then do that so uh, the elastic has this specific thing called common data schema uh, which is elastic common schema which also is an open source project that you could use and then elastic common schema is like a schema uh, that all these uh, tools are which are compliant uh, which, which we make compliant in fact like we help you to like you know ship the data gets shipped from that agent but then we convert uh, put it in a proper format using our logging libraries which i'm going to demo it now and then like you know using that you could correlate later and show like you know see at this log line what is the metric for that particular system or at this particular trace what is the uh, specific log inputs or metrics that are getting generated you could do that triangulation you could do pinpointing of a specific issue that is happening in your infrastructure structure very easily um, as much as data you could bring in from multiple disparate systems actually so so that's why it is very useful for even security researchers or uh, folks who are in the DevSecOps line as well so that they could they could literally merge your uh, DevOps or your SecOps functionality and try to bring in this particular uh, observability approach into everything uh, now quickly let me kind of like you know uh, 
take a pause and then you know uh, uh like show uh like you know show show you show you the entire app etc that i have i have in the interest of time i have not downloaded and running in this laptop because i'm also recording the session um or play or showing this session what i am what i'm kind of uh, uh i have done i have done is like i have created a pycon apac uh elastic cloud deployment you could go and click on the deployments and then you could see uh a create deployment like you could go to cloud.elastic.co create a simple account using your google microsoft and whatever it is and then create deployment and then uh, you could simply kind of like you know uh create a deployment so easily and then with whatever the cloud that you are interested in you could choose what cloud you want to use uh, and then like you know what what area that you want to deploy like which region and then simply deploy uh, uh elastic uh, cloud deployment which would deploy you uh, uh elastic search instance kibana instance and apm server also an enterprise search instance uh so if you really want you can shut them out shut them out which if you don't want uh the instances that you want uh but then if you are using for observability you might want to use that so specifically i have this space uh, th this particular elastic search instance deployed and uh, what i would like to do is like now start integrating this into my app now what is my app and where does it really look like so i have a, a python flask app uh, this is the file structure of it uh, like i have a simple main.py uh, which contains uh, two or three endpoints here like the main endpoint and then like you know i have a search bar i have an index i have already indexed the data uh, which is a movies data set the indian bollywood movies i have indexed and then this is powered by a search engine in elastic search that is that is shipping all of that so let me quickly start this particular uh, you know the app and then uh, show you what's what's there and how it would look like it's also yes it's also integrated with the css framework uh, which is uh, uh, which is which is a tailwind so yeah it's it's a bit relatively new so what i'm going to do is simply clear and say python main.py and then it simply kick starts the uh, the specific uh, app as you could see let me increase the size yes so i have this app uh, which is running and on my machine and then uh, let me simply open As you could see, it is taking a bit of time because uh, maybe my laptop is a bit slow. But otherwise, uh, the app loads pretty quick, and uh, it's also available on the GitHub. I would uh, throw the link here if you want to directly go to the GitHub link and then try to see what this app looks like. Uh, yes, this is the app search flask app. You could go and uh, look at that i have integrated the search engine i have also done everything so the same code that is available that i'm showing here is also available there so you could also go and look at that as well now i have this Py pycharm app uh, i mean i'm sorry uh, i have this specific app which is uh, which is saying pycharm 2021 and then um, uh, because i have done a similar session on search sometime back at pycharm so if you want to take a look at that you can do that uh, so so then um, i have this uh, uh, the search bar i could search for uh, various uh, like you know movies or various text or whatever it is and then like it will give me a result on whatever i'm trying to search i have a bunch of movies that i i specifically uh, i'm seeing here uh, which would show me the result i don't know why it is really really slow but then it usually it should not be uh, if you are not recording or looking at various things now uh, now let me quickly uh, go to the go to the uh, the Okay, now let me quickly go to the app and then um, also show you if you are uh, like you, how do you integrate logs, metrics, traces and see, understand what, how this app works in real life and how you could probably uh, run all of this. So as you could see that this is a simple app. There is nothing crazy here. I have a different branch running here. Uh, let us integrate uh, this data into this particular branch. So I have uh, a branch called five APM logs. I, I'll click that and then like, you know, you would, you would, you would see some changes happening in the background. Um, yeah. So 
let me show you the changes so i have a simple change which is the config.json what config config.json has is uh, the credentials that would require it to kind of like take it to uh, uh, you know what you call uh, 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 ship the data the logs metrics to a specific uh, elastic search instance so let me take a look at that and show you yes okay so uh, as you could see that uh, i have the search engine connections like the the cloud service where i i have this search engine running and then i am giving the api key and the engine name etc now similar way i could also give the uh, apm server uh, url service name that i want to showcase and then also like the secret token uh, that is um, that is that is needed for the data to be shipped so as you could see here i have all of those because i have created the cloud uh the cloud instance previously so i can just simply go and uh, cherry pick them and like you know copy the endpoint like so i'm copying the apm endpoint and uh, yeah it says copied and then paste it here similarly i have the service name service name can be anything i'm just uh it need not be the same cloud instance name there is no relation to that but just because we are in the same uh conference and then uh, we are we are talking about that let me say pycon apac and uh, that would be great and then like you know uh, i also have a secret token that i could give here uh, which is like uh, apm and fleet and then i could go and literally uh, collect the secret token that is there because secret token is not mentioned there i have to pick it from here in a specific menu so these are the details that you need to fill in this app you could go and uh, deploy a cloud instance and start doing this alternatively you could download the apm server apm server runs on 8200 port uh, when you spin up locally and then you give a service name of your choice and also like you could also generate a secret token uh, if if it is not a uh, https based servers because if you are running locally you might not need a secure secure secret token to run that so you could remove those uh, things there as well as in the code be do remember i have a code uh, which which kind of like brings in this agent and then like you know shows you all of that so let me go to the code and also show you that what i am specially adding to collect logs metrics and traces As you could see, I have imported a bunch of uh, like uh, the packages. Uh, first one is the Elastic Enterprise Search, which is the search engine based uh, uh, package that you have in the requirements file as well. And then the Flask framework, then uh, a bunch of them which are related to something log, logging, Elastic APM, etc. So Elastic APM is is the uh, tracing tool that we are using, the agent that would ship data to Elastic Search uh, or the APM server. Uh, and then like you have the logging. So what we also do is like as part of this uh, shipping the traces we also like can collect the logs that are happening the logging uh, in this app is also collected and uh, brought up uh, to the Elasticsearch so that you could have the correlation in place all the IDs in place so each trace is given an ID trace ID and a transaction ID for each transaction uh, so you could go and uh, correlate or like find what are the logs for this particular trace you could do that so uh, so you could find out uh, things like that say i have uh, those configured here uh, i have i'm loading all those config from the config.json and then like app search and then like you have uh, the elastic apm and those configurations uh, here uh, so as you could see uh, i have the a blogger info and i'm saying like you know welcome to the movies app and various other stuff i am i also have some other whenever each time i'm calling query i'm just logging that so all of this is enrolled or put up in this uh, code that i have here i'm just using a stream handler and uh, collecting that handler but i'm setting a specific sort of formatter and log all this thing into a log file called app.log which i'm gonna show you when i'm running in a unicorn server um and then uh, and then like uh, uh, all of this is would be a json logging we are shipping the json directly and to ship this log app.log i'm using something called file beat which which is a beats which i showed previously so essentially what we are trying to do is like we have a flask app and we have added these agents wrote that code connected to that server that we have and then eventually running with gunicon and logging it to app.log that log is sent by a file a file bit so you could listen again uh, so basically we are sending data and then like you know uh, from all sorts of data the metrics the logs the traces from this app with few lines of code few connection and an agent called file bit uh, so 
let me quickly uh, kind of run it with gunicon so that you know uh, it it's it's uh, it's ready and you could simply go and uh, run it so i have the gunicon with two workers bind it to 5000 port and uh, return to uh, uh, like you know uh, 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 an output called app.log so let me show you that so as you could see this is more important now so let me show that so you could also dockerize this kind dockerize this specific machine and then also kind of uh, push it to uh, push it to a service like azure app service or app engine or uh, or you could also run it in a container instance uh, there are many many possibilities that you could do and on the other hand i would also like to kind of uh, start the uh, like you know the file beat that we have here i am already in the file beat server so what i did is like i i have downloaded the file beat and i also copied that into the uh, like you know the the code here as you if you have seen previously when i am showing the code uh, this that's how it is it is here it's not checked in because it is a version component and uh, you don't want a spam binary you want to upgrade uh, to a latest one and then um, i simply can type file beat hyphen e which shows us more information about what's happening behind the scene so this will ship the logs that we are uh, generating and then it will also uh, that, and then like you know uh, helps us to look at everything from a same point of view now all of this is happening on my laptop uh, so you might see a bit of uh, lag or a bit of slowness but then um, usually if you deploy it in a cloud service and cloud environment this is quite easy so you don't need to worry about all of that so let us quickly open this service and see if I am whatever I am trying to do uh, would come to here or not, or also see whether if our app is really running or not. If not, we might need to debug that. So let me quickly go to the main page and uh, select uh, to run this particular app. As you could see, it's more uh, uh, it, it's taking more time because of my system memory and everything but otherwise um, uh, otherwise you could see that so the app is running it's ready it's all good so let us quickly go to the services the kibana part so how did i come here i just uh, clicked on the open apm app function here which is there and then i'm just shipping that uh, I, I, and just i opened the page it, it lands me onto this particular uh, kibana page this particular kibana page wherein i could see what's happening in the in the in, uh, instance so let me click refresh here to see if there is any service named pycon apac and within the last 15 minutes that has sent traces so yeah i think uh, there is a service named pycon apac that it's just started which shows a specific latency throughput failed transaction rate etc etc so let me click on python apac and uh, see if i could uh, show you the traces uh, the logs and everything so uh, it the, the the overview page shows a bunch of things uh, like you know the the latency uh, that 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 the api is per, uh, that the app is having or uh, you can also calculate it via the met metrics like you know 95th percentile 99th percentile etc and you have the throughput and then transactions and if you have any errors that i have created a custom errors or sort or sorts so that's shown here and then like you know if there are any dependencies like mysql or any database now here we have search engine so it shows that uh, so also the the laptop or the node the metrics from that particular machine is also collected here like you know memory usage etc etc so now uh, like i said it could monitor that particular transaction uh, you could go to the transactions and see uh, that what uh, what are the transactions that are monitored here uh, like you know there is only get transaction because we only call this particular thing you if you search it will start looking at the search as well uh, like say if i say love and i search for that specific sort of uh, it it calls an api called search uh, behind the scenes in the flask app and uh, that should eventually return us to see how uh, how these things things are lay i mean you could you could also see the transaction here if i could refresh here yeah, as you could see, uh, there is a post search uh, API here, uh, which shows a specific latency, failed transaction site. If you want to go in deep into it and see how the trace would look like, you can click on that and then um, thereby it will expand uh, to uh, how the throughput time spent by each span. And then if there are any fa failed transaction rate, uh, there are 
not all traces like everything uh, is traced like usually uh, you, it is set to trace everything but then you could also reduce to trace only a specific sam sample of the transactions like you see that when i search this it, it is taking like around 952 milliseconds uh, it's quite quite good amount of time because it's uh, i'm running uh, everything on my laptop um, and then like you know it takes it took uh, like you know 468 millisecond to call the server and then like you know give results if i want to optimize this app i would probably like you know run it on a cloud instance and then probably do all of this in much better fashion uh, but then like you know that is that is an action for me to take and, and then i could also go and click on this particular uh, span uh, these are called spans and this is the trace and then it's a one specific transaction for get slash uh, post sort slash search and if i click on this particular thing it would show me uh, the details of the uh, this particular span and the meta information or oh, uh, it says http 2 xx like uh, uh, everything and then uh, it shows me all of that uh, very easily so let us wait for it and see yeah as you could see uh, it shows all the http body what search i have done uh, etc and then you know from which agent user agent it has started and uh, what is the what is the if, if you are using a specific container it will also show the container related information you will also click on investigate and go deeper into what logs etc uh, you could do all of that correlation uh, much easier so let me come back uh, to see the metrics of the machine that I'm running. So my laptop and uh, I, I don't think it will be really great. Uh, yeah, it's on the higher side of 50% uh, uh, and then you know the system me system memory usage is also around 30%. And then you have the logs. Uh, so the logs are like, you know, we are, we are sending it via file bit. Uh, as you could see, uh, while we are trying to access this application, you would see the logs uh, that are coming to this particular uh, machine. Yeah, it's saying starting Gonicon and welcomes to app as and when I make more requests, the logs will be uh, pushed from there, collected, pushed and like pushed to this particular machine. Uh, last but not the least, you could also see a service map of uh, all of these agents. If you have multiple services, uh, microservices and your Python application is interacting with multiple upstream or downstream or uh, uh, parallel services, you would also see it in a large screen, like, you know, and observe uh, what's happening uh, in your uh, in your service, what's the throughput and the high level. Uh, so all of this can be done and correlated and you would end of the day you would probably um, get a much better access in how to do all of this uh, so i have this uh, application i mean i have this uh, uh, github repo that you could go take a look at it and then you know you follow the follow through the git uh, different branches that i have mentioned one two three four five uh, in a sequential manner and you could implement this in your organization uh, and I have some resources to share as well. So if you want to ask more questions about Elastic or the stack or APM or anything, uh, there's an open discuss forum, IT forum that we have uh, that you could uh, uh, that you could simply ask questions here. And then uh, we also run meetups in multiple countries, which includes Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore, and everywhere, even in India. So if you are if you are interested to participate or speak at one of those meetups, and if you have thoughts to share please do write to meetups at elastic.co or you could also write to the chapter uh, in, in each year reason we, we are doing regular meetups in in the region and then uh, there are free trainings if you are more interested you could do that we have a slack group if you want to join uh, elastic slack uh, that is there and then obviously the documentation link if you want to go to the guide it is ela.st slash observe uh, that being said, uh, thanks for watching this session and if you have more questions, feel free to DM me and don't forget to subscribe uh, to DevShortStockMin. Thank you.